guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Shio and I make lifestyle and art related videos. So you can click the subscribe button and tap that notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I make a new video. Today I want to share with you guys something that is quite important and close to my heart and that is how I take care of my cat that has HC. HCM is hyperthropic cardiomyopathy, which is a heart disease that is very common in cats. I am by no means a vet and I have tried my best to do as much research as possible. So what I'm sharing with you today is just things that I found out from the research that I've done to take care of my cat. This is little Taco and I just recently adopted him not too long ago and he is one and a half years old. I'm sorry. Hey, there you go. Taco actually suffers from hyperthropic cardiomyopathy. It is a heart disease that causes the left ventricle of the cat's heart to thicken and because of this thickening, it is actually harder for the cat to pump blood around the body. Now this condition is progressive and it cannot be cured but treatments can help with slowing down the heart rate and also prolonging your cat's life. HCM is something that has to be medically diagnosed and it has to be lab tested. Now the thing about HCM is that it eventually could lead to congestive heart failure and this is sort of like a heart attack that happens in cats and this congestive heart failure happens due to fluid accumulation around the lungs or in the lungs. Congestive heart failure could cause sudden death and it could also block major arteries because of the blood clot and it could paralyze the hind legs of your cat. Now there are some cat breeds that are more commonly affected by these heart diseases and these breeds are Ragdoll, Maine Coon, Oriental breeds like Persians, Burmese, Sphinx Cat and Lastly, domestic short hair, which is what <laughs> my two buddies are. <laughs> They're both domestic short hairs. Signs and symptoms to see if your cat is suffering from this disease. So firstly, cats are really good at masking their pain. So even if they're suffering a lot and they're going through really, really painful, you know, experiences, you can really tell it. So most common sign that you will see is your cat has a significantly big decrease in appetite. That's one of the more worrying signs. Another thing that you can look out for is if you bring your cat to the vet and if the vet hears something irregular in their heart, beat then you know it could be a big warning sign as well so commonly one of the biggest telltale signs is heart murmurs extra heartbeat irregular breathing patterns or irregular heartbeat so if you notice all these things in your cat you might want to bring your cat out for something called an ectocardiogram and basically what it is is an ultrasound to see how your cat's heart is doing so these echocardiograms cost about six hundred dollars and from what i know some animal hospitals don't have these services so you might have to go to a specialized clinic for the echocardiogram. Now one more thing to look out for is if your cat is suddenly vomiting or suddenly not having appetite or if they couldn't move their hind legs then this could be that they are suffering from congestive heart failure and these should be taken to the vet immediately. Now treatments for the cats. So HCM is something that is not curable. So once your cat has it, it is most likely not going to disappear. Now because it is not curable, the cat will eventually get congestive heart failure. So all we can do as pet owners is to delay that possibility as long as possible. And from what I've heard, once your cat is diagnosed with HCM, they have roughly about four to six years to live. But of course, that's not the case for all cats. So there have been cats that has, you know, HCM or other heart diseases that live past 16, 17, 18 years. So it's really just how well we can best take care of them in the little time that they have with us. So what Taco has right now, he's actually just mild to moderate HCM so his case isn't as serious yet because he's only a year old so he's not that old yet. So for him right now, we have him on beta blockers and what this does is it actually slows down the heart rate of his heart so that his heart doesn't have to pump so much blood and it reduces the stress on the heart. But because of this, it increases the stress on the kidney. Their kidneys have to work a little bit harder. So for taco especially, I try to give him food that is lesser in sodium so that it reduces heart on the kidneys. And one more thing that I do for him is actually giving him as well as Ban Ban. This is Ban Ban. And I give both of my cats 
taurine supplements. Now, taurine is a very important amino acid that cats must have and they actually get it from protein. And the thing is, cats aren't able to produce taurine on their own so it has to be supplemented in the food. Now, taurine is naturally occurring in meat and because cats are carnivores, they technically should get their daily doses of taurine. But the problem is most of the commercial food that you find, even the ones that I feed my cat with, only has 0.05% of taurine in it and for an average cat they need about 75 to 100 milligrams of taurine every day and also if you're a pet owner that makes homemade pet food for your cat um, you might want to be aware of how you prepare your food so taurine from what I've heard is that this protein breaks down completely when the meat is exposed to high temperatures so because I don't know how you know the cat food is being prepared when I buy the canned ones what I do is I supplement them with extra taurine so this is the taurine supplement that I give for both my cats and so what I do is I will scoop one eighth of a teaspoon of taurine into the cat food and also put in the veggie science multivitamins for my cat so just one tablet for each cat a day and I only do this steps in the morning so once I'm done with that I mix the powder and the tablet up with a cat food and I give them fancy feast. So Bamba really likes gravy so we give them gravy as well as poultry and beef. And then on top of that for taco I actually give him his beta blocker and this you can actually get from Walgreens and it's about $10 for the big bottle and now the pills come in normal regular pill sizes but for taco his dosage is that he has to take a quarter of a tablet every 12 hours so I feed my cats always at 8 30 a.m and 8 30 p.m so that I'm making sure that taco is getting his 12 hours difference in his pills also what I've done is that I have cut up the pills into quarters so I I can just easily put it on top of his food and I can see it when he eats it. Now because this heart disease is something that is not very easily diagnosed, so the next time you bring your cat to the vet and you know the vet tells you that there is an irregular heartbeat or heart murmur, you might want to bring your cat to get an echocardiogram. Also from what I've heard is that they can only detect these kind of heart diseases in the cat after your cat has been a year old. So if you have a little kitten like Ban Ban, he's not a year old yet so we haven't really brought him to check for his heart but from what I know he's a really healthy boy. Yeah, are you a healthy boy? You are. Say hi to everyone. Hi everyone. Hi. And then then. Okay, go. Yeah. So you might want to bring your cat down for the echocardiogram. Even though it might be kind of expensive, it could really prevent heart diseases from occurring or getting really bad without you knowing it. Now, I was very lucky because I adopted Taco from a pet shelter in San Jose and they actually diagnosed him with HCM before I've gotten it. So I learned most of this information that I knew from the shelter itself and they take really good care of him. So bringing you know, him out to the doctors and bringing him for checkup is a very expensive procedure and I'm really really glad that the pet shelter does it. So where I got Taco from is actually the Dancing Cat and I'll give a link to their website down below. They have so many amazing cats and if you guys live in the Bay Area, you could definitely check them out if you're looking to adopt a cat. Another thing is because Taco has this heart disease, uh, we need to be really aware of the amount of stress that he's experiencing as well as the amount of fluid that is in his body. Because as you can tell, fluid buildup really affects cats with these kind of heart diseases a lot. So what happened to him in one incident was that Taco fell sick after he got here and he was having a high fever. Normally when a cat has fever, we need to reduce the temperature of the cat. So when I brought him to the vet, usually they will put the cats under IV fluid so it's a little drip to just drain their body temperature but because Taco has this disease, we didn't want to overload his heart or the kidney so instead of giving him the IV, we actually had to just inject liquid under his skin to bring down his temperature. If we didn't know that he had this heart disease, then you know, we could we would have just given him IV and this would have brought him even more stress to the heart which is why it is really important to get your cat diagnosed. So the follow up for Taco's diagnosis is that he has to go for echocardiogram every year. You do have to bring him to do the checkup 
out every year to make sure that his heart is doing well and you know if need be to follow up with medications for him and for his beta blockers he actually has to be on them for life so this is something that you know we need to make sure that he has as well so yeah, thank you so much for watching the video and if you found it helpful, you can give me a thumbs up. Also, I have linked my social media down below so you can follow me on my social. As well as some important articles I found on the heart diseases, I've linked them down below as well so you can have a read. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Wishing you love, happiness and joy. Peace out!